Hello guys, thanks for joining me on this video. This is Fairless Papers number four, and this is Jay again, our worried, our little worried Jay. So I'm going to read a couple of quotes I found interesting while I was reading this, and then make my comments on them, and I'm also going to summarize a bit what he's saying, because he is long-winded. So with them, and with most other European nations, we are rivals in navigation and the carrying trade. And we shall deceive ourselves if we suppose that any of them will rejoice to see it flourish. For, as our carrying trade cannot increase without in some degree diminishing theirs, it is more their interest and will be their policy to restrain than to, to promote it. So ultimately what it is, he's worried that we're not going to be able to trade without an army basically behind us to defend us because the other nations would just attack us because now we're competition. In the trade to China and India, we interfere with more than one nation, inasmuch as it enables us to partake in advantages which they had in a manner monopolized, and as we thereby supply ourselves with commodities which we used to purchase from them. So basically he's saying, in the trade to China and India, we interfere the most with them because they monopol monopolize certain spices and things like that, that now you can grow in America, that they found in America. So he's just, he's worried, again, that these nations won't have anything to do with us or they'll attack us, basically. So with that in mind, he's saying, oh, well, we need a, we need a, nav we need an army, we need a navigational army, things like that. So it says, let me see, I gotta pick up where I was. Okay, the extension of our own commerce in our own vessels cannot give pleasure to any nations who possess territories on or near this continent because the cheapness and excellence of our productions added to the circumstance of vicinity and the enterprise and address of our merchants and navigators will give us a greater share in the advantages which those territories afford than can consist with the wishes or policy of their respective sovereigns. So essentially, we can give neighboring nations these same products for cheaper, faster, and at better quality because we are closer to them. Again, this is the this is the thing we are now in. Um, oh, I can't think of the word, <laughs> but we're now in contest with them for the goods and services they've had a monopoly on for a while. So then he goes on to say, as the safety of the whole is in the interest of the whole and cannot be provided for without government, either one or more or many, let us inquire whether one good government is not, relative to the subject in question, more competent than any other given number of whatever. So to just close here on this quote, Jay is thinking it would be better to have a central government to better guard our commerce, essentially. And the last one he was worried about our defensive borders and this one he's worried about our commerce so i the way i'm looking at this is we hear the basis of this argument today when you're watching the news say something like we need this trade deal with china we don't need it because we need china we don't need china so we need it because we want to maintain good relations okay that's the next thing they say usually so I find this interesting mostly because, again, from the beginning, we were better exporters and we were even then so rich with natural resources that we could support ourselves instead of buying abroad. We're independent already here, even from this. We're so independent, we're able to turn around and make a profit from it. So this worried Jay tremendously, though, because he believed it would make other countries not like us and create governments ready to destroy the Americas. This is the same worry that liberals have today. They've packaged it a bit differently, but it's still the same worry. Will they like us? If the original contenders with England had said, well, I don't know, will England like us after? Will they attack us after we gain our freedom? We wouldn't even have had it. And I think what is missing in Jay's calculations here is the simple fact that the freedom that you have and the things that we have in America are worth the cost that comes with freedom. And this is another reason why I wanted to do this this week because Monday was Memorial Day and we were remembering all the people who fell in the defense of America. 
and even though you know Jay is saying we need a big centralized defense I don't agree with him I'll get to that later but these people didn't worry about whether or not England would like us they didn't worry about what other nations find us to be troublesome and come after us they didn't worry about that they were worried about we're not free we have taxation without representation um, everything that we are going everything that we need is going up in price and cost which means we're not able to buy it for our families which means our families are suffering from this that's what they were thinking about Jay turns around and says, well, now that we have all this stuff, we have to be able to defend it and protect it. And where I don't disagree with that sentiment, I just disagree on how he wants to carry it out. I don't think a centralized government for defense is maybe the best. I think, I think all the states could have gotten together and defended us um, the same, maybe even better, because depending on... Because then we would have had competition between the, between the states as to who had better soldiers. And so the training would have upped and everything. The training would have been different, harder. We would have been... It just would have been different in that sense. So back to what I was trying to say about freedom. Is that they understood that the freedom costs insecurity. There's a chaos that exists inside freedom that is needed. You have to have it in order for people to be free and in order for opportunities to rise up. Otherwise, it just doesn't happen. Everything's controlled, everybody has the same, etc., like that. So that is what those men saw and they wanted, uh, to, in an to an extent, a small amount of chaos because without it, you can't, you can't change, you can't grow, there's no, there's no opportunity rising, things like that. I call it chaos, some other people call it other things, but that's just how I see it. It is truly remarkable how America hasn't changed that much, really. There's a side that wants to remain independent and free, the right, and the side that wants to make sure everyone likes us and we aren't rocking the boat too much and wants to start cinching things down and controlling them, and that's the left. So here's the, uh, here's the other quote I wanted to get into. And here's what he says. He says, what would the militia of Britain be if the English militia obeyed the government of England, if the Scotch militia obeyed the government of Scotland, and if the Welsh militia obeyed the government of Wales? Suppose an invasion. Would those three governments, if they agreed at all, be able, with all their respective forces, to operate against the enemy so effectively as the single government of Great Britain would? So earlier, Jay's claiming that if, what did he say? What did he say? The safety of all is the concern of all, but then goes on in this statement to say, but we would never work together for our own safety. Come on, one or the other. He also downplays government as not being efficient enough. So if the government's not big enough, it's not efficient enough, mm, we all know from today that that's not the case. But he wants to make a bigger one for protection, okay? This is the same sort of double-minded thinking we see on both sides of the aisle in our politics today. So again, America hasn't changed all that much as far as the thoughts on either side, okay? I think that we are starting to see sort of a liberalization of the conservative side of things as you look at what's going on. But ultimately, one is, you know, the government's not supposed to do this. We're just here to protect the borders and that's about it. And then the other side is we have to control everything because what if? All right, and I think the chaos found in freedom is a beautiful thing that should not be restricted. So I also think it's important for me to point out, now that we're at the end of this video, that Jay was not interested in having the federal government run the lives of people or get in between the states for anything other than war defense, all right, in defense of our people abroad. He was very worried that in our weakened state, other stronger governments would come in and take us over. So what do you think about Jay's fear? Founded? Misplaced? What do you think? I personally think it's a bit misplaced. I think that he does have some points that are le legitimate points, okay? But that his answer of larger government or we need to centralize the government is not the answer. We just, we just got away from a centralized government that was doing all of this for us and was also stomping on us. 
So, you know, the fear must be pretty heavy with Jay if he wants to go back to that system. Thanks for joining me in this video, everyone. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Remember to pray and read your Bibles, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!